Hello everyone, I'm Rafi. Today I wanted to discuss my Eastern Conference predictions for the upcoming NHL season. The season opens on Tuesday. So with that in mind, I wanted to give my predictions for the Eastern Conference and Western Conference. This video is my Eastern Conference predictions video. You can find the Western Conference predictions video as well on our YouTube channel. Be sure to like this video as always and also subscribe. Let me know as well after watching this video, where do you guys think I'm right? Where do you guys think I'm wrong? What do you guys think with some of these predictions too? Because I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are. So we'll start off with the Atlantic Division. And the Atlantic Division, historically, and historically being like the past more recent time of five, six years ago, has been dominated by four teams, Florida, Boston, Toronto, and Tampa. And that's kind of been the mainstay. Set it, forget it. You can always just bank on those four teams. They're always going to take up four of the playoff spots out of the eight in the Eastern Conference. But now recently, over the past couple of years, we've had a couple of teams who have been rebuilding the Sabres, Red Wings, and Senators who are really trying to get into the playoff hunt and pursue a playoff spot. We saw the Red Wings last year. They came just one point shy. We saw the Sabres two years ago. They finished a couple points out of the playoffs after a valiant effort in the second half. And the Senators, who, if they have a good start to the season, they can certainly be in the playoff hunt as well. So you have three teams as well who are now trying to get into the playoffs. And you also have the Montreal Canadiens, who, no disrespect to them, but I think Canadians fans would agree they're a rebuilding team right now. They're not expected to compete for a playoff spot, but you'd certainly like to see them make positive strides as a whole as they've continued to improve and you hope that the young guys take the next step. So as you can see here, these are my predictions for the Atlantic Division. We'll start off at 8th. In 8th, I have the Montreal Canadiens for the exact reason that I just outlined. It's another rebuilding year for the Montreal Canadiens. I like the pickup of Line A. Thankfully, he's not out too long term, but still missing two to three months is still not great. I thought Line A was going to really help bolster that top six, but unfortunately that's going to have to wait a little bit. I still think that they lack on the high end defense. So that's certainly something that they'd like to address in the NHL draft. Maybe Caden Gooley can be that guy if he's healthy, obviously as well. We'll see what happens with him. Ryan Bacher, also a piece that could get some NHL games this year, but obviously with his injury a couple last week, we don't know when he's going to exactly return and to what extent he'll be playing in the NHL. But yeah, Montreal, just to keep it short and simple, don't expect too much from them. They should be, once again, a bottom 10 team in the NHL. Moving on, in seventh place, I have the Ottawa Senators. So we'll see what happens. I think you can really interchange them, Buffalo and Detroit, for who likely is going to be the team out of the three to make the playoffs or kind of any order is with me personally with those three teams i would ottawa seventh just because i don't know how omar is going to play behind a worse defense than he did in boston boston was much more structured had much more reliable defense ottawa doesn't quite have that obviously they trade chicken this offseason for brendan Dillon, who i think is a great shutdown defenseman but he doesn't provide the same offense as chicken or i don't think he's as all round of as good of a defenseman as chicken and Travis Green did not end too well with a sign in Vancouver, so we'll see what happens and see what he's able to do with Ottawa. Ottawa, as I will also discuss with Buffalo shortly, has been a victim of slow starts. The team, both teams have had really rough time out the gate, and this, the past couple of years, they will have below 500 records going into December. And that just gives them a hole that it's so hard to dig out of. So that's going to be the key for Ottawa and Buffalo. We'll talk about a little bit more further this year to have really good starts to the year and be able to build off that as well. Moving on into sixth place, I have Detroit. Yes, I know they just missed the playoffs by one point last year, but I, I just don't like the defense. I just, Petrie, Wall, who's recently just put on waivers, I, I just don't think the defense is very good. I think that they have Sider, who is for sure a top air defenseman. But looking at the rest of the defense, Mata is another name as well. None of those guys really stick out to me as even a top four defenseman. And they have four or five players who are all playing higher up than I think they should be on a contending team or would be on a contending team. We'll see what happens with Simon Edvinson if he gets some NHL games. And I think he could potentially get some get a decent amount of NHL games in this year. He's been progressing quite well, and we'll see what happens with him. I think that he, if he can step up and be a really good player, I think he certainly has a ceiling to be a top pair defenseman. So if he can get things going right out the gate, that's certainly going to help with their defense. 
And then also the def- the goaltending is also a concern for me with Huso, Talbot, and Lyon. Three solid goalies. Talbot was good last year for the Kings in his time periods and in stretches. Huso and Lyon are more hit or miss goaltenders who have had their fair share of good games and have also had their fair share of bad games. I don't think really any of them are quite reliable enough to where I feel like, okay, this is a playoff caliber goalie, playoff team caliber goalie. So that's why I have them at six right below the Buffalo Sabres. But again, as I stated, Detroit could certainly be better than Buffalo this year. I wouldn't be surprised. Then in fifth place, taking the second wild card spot, I have the Buffalo Sabres jumping into the playoff mix this year. Last year was a massive down year for guys like Tage Thompson, Dylan Cousins, who were really expected to take steps up this past year. And Overall, I expect those to be them, those years that they just had to be anomalies and the years prior and Cousins' potential will shine this up in the year. I think both players are going to have really good years this year. I also liked how they beefed up the bottom six with Malinside, McLeod, and Lafferty, even though that the value on some of those players and what they gave up to acquire some of those guys was certainly a little rich for me personally. I think they did a good job acquiring some speed and more toughness in their bottom six and made it more of a playoff-style bottom six, personally. I think Ukapek Lukanen and Devin Levi are going to be a solid goaltending tandem this year as well. Reliable goaltending is very important to me when I'm making these predictions, so I think that really stands out to me overall why I'd pick them over a team like Detroit. And then the defense as a whole is much better than a team like Ottawa. So I, Buffalo, and fourth, we'll see what happens this year with Lindy Ruff back in Buffalo. But the key thing for Buffalo is they're going to have to go off, get off to a good start if they want to go on a deep playoff run and make the playoffs in general. In fourth place, picking up the first wildcard spot, I have the Tampa Lightning. Feels like the window's closing a little bit on the Lightning. And although I do like the fact that they essentially swapped out Steven Samkos for Jake Gensel, their bottom six is horrendous. And that's a big reason why that I don't expect them to go on a deep playoff run this year. Maybe they get out of round one. But I think they're good enough to still make the playoffs in the form of a wild card spot. But I don't expect them to crack the top three in the Atlantic this year. And third, I have Toronto. Toronto, obviously, have the core four. And you have a couple solid pieces like Matthew Knives. And you also have Max Domi, who are good complementary pieces for that top six. But the bottom six as a whole is quite concerning for me when I'm thinking about a team that can go on a deep playoff run. Same with the defense as well, as always, even though they picked up a guy like Chris Tanev, who certainly is going to help be a great shutdown defenseman for their team. I think Toronto is certainly a top three team. I think they're going to finish in the top three this year. But at the end of the day, I don't think it matters to Maple Leafs fans because I think the one thing that they care about is going to the playoff run. So I have Toronto in third. They could certainly finish second, but I have the Maple Leafs in third. We'll see what happens with Joseph Bull as well because his health has been a little shaky the past couple of years. Recently, he was given an extension as well, so we'll see if he earns that extension. But yeah, I have Toronto in third. Then in second place, I have Boston. Boston made the move that I was expecting them to make in acquiring a player who can play first line center, and that's Elias Lindholm, although he's certainly in the bat bottom half of first line centers, comparatively speaking, in the NHL. I think him alongside a guy like Pasternak, he's really going to excel as a forward, potentially even with Marshan. And I think Nikita Zadorov, although a little too long a term and a little overpaid with the money, is going to certainly be a nice piece for that overall unit top six for their defense. Jeremy Swayman's also been extended by the Bruins, so that's finally done. And I expect him and Corpusal to be a solid duo for this year. And we'll see what happens with Swayman getting a higher workload this year. But yeah, I have the Bruins at second. And lastly, I have the Florida Panthers in first place. Yes, they lost a lot of pieces in Montour, OEL, and Tarasenko. The defense looks a little worse, but I still think that they're going to be the team to beat in the Atlantic. They haven't proven any reasons why for me to doubt them. We saw last year they were without Ekblad and Montour for until November, December, and they really held it down. Shout out to Gustav Forsling. The big thing is going to be Bobrovsky not regressing and just the four Panthers having good health. So as long as they're healthy and as long as Bobrovsky can t- can continue to play at that level that he played in the playoffs in the past couple of years, I think Florida will certainly be the team to beat. So that's my Atlantic predictions. And now we'll move on to the Metropolitan Division. Now let's move over to the Metropolitan Division. We'll start off with the team that I have finishing last in the Metropolitan, the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Blue Jackets, I think as a whole, the big thing is just to play together as a team and for the young guys to develop this year. I, like many people, expect them to be a bottom five team this year. 
But I think the big thing for them is just guys like Fantilli, Voronkov, Yurchek, if he gets some time in the NHL, for them to take that next step and to continue to develop as prospects and future stars in the NHL. Again, I have them as bottom five team, but I would love to be proven wrong by them. Moving on to the team that I have in seventh, the Philadelphia Flyers. The Flyers are a team that last year exceeded expectations. A lot of people, including myself, had them as a bottom five team. And they said, no, we're not doing that. John Torrell did a great job coaching the team up to a point where they were competitive and in a playoff spot or just outside a playoff spot up until the last week or two of the regular season last year. Mafe Mitchkov is going to be really fun to watch this year, but I think the Flyers are going to come a bit down to earth this year. I expect them to be a bottom 10 team, but we saw what happened with them last year. Who knows? They might be able to repeat the same thing with potential Calder winner Mafe Mitchkov. <laughs> Moving on to the team that I have in six, the Washington Capitals. Now, the Capitals stumbled into the playoffs last year. They had a terrible plus minus. They were not great defensively, but they were still made the playoffs and they were still worthy of making a playoff spot. Alex Ovechkin had a down year last year. The big thing is, is he going to be able to beat Wayne Gretzky's goal record? He's about 40 goals away. So I think it's doable if he has a bounce back year and shows that last year wasn't regression. It was just bad puck luck as a whole. Other things to keep an eye on with the Capitals, Jacob Chikrin and Pierre-Luc Dubois acquired this offseason. Those are two big pieces on the defense and forward side. If those guys can play up to what their expectations are, then I think the Capitals could potentially push for a playoff spot, if not get into the playoffs. So the Capitals are certainly a team that I think has quite a few question marks, especially because Pierre-Luc Dubois, he hasn't been playing up to his contract and really been playing up to even like a $3 million contract over the past couple of years. And if some of these additions that they picked up, Wa, for example, as well in free agency, then I wouldn't be shocked if the Capitals exceed this prediction that I have for them. Moving into fifth place at the Islanders, Sorokin came off a back surgery and he'll be good to go to start the season, but that's something I at least want to note. So it could be concerning, but right now it seems like he's all good to go. Nothing in the preseason says otherwise. They have a solid decor as always. They have the goaltending, as I mentioned, with Sorokin, but the problem is they don't have enough high-end talent in their top six. Anders Lee isn't getting any younger. Brock Nelson isn't getting any younger. And Brock Nelson had a really good year last year. But if Brock Nelson, right after Matthew Barzell, is your second highest offensive producer, you're not going to be contending or potentially even making the playoffs. So I have the Islanders in fifth. I have them missing the playoffs. Again, I would need to see someone step up big time, like a Kyle Palmieri, et cetera, for me to think that the Islanders could potentially go on a – deep run or even make the playoffs so we'll see what happens to the islanders but i don't know if sorokin sorokin's definitely good enough to drag them into the playoffs but we'll see what happens in fourth place i have the penguins last year they missed the playoffs back-to-back years missing the playoffs i've been missing the playoffs again for the third straight year this is a team that i always had the mindset of okay they need to prove to me that they need to miss the playoffs before i take them out of the playoffs and it's hard to believe that a Sidney crosby team would miss the playoffs three years in a row. But I just don't feel confident enough in their defense. I don't feel enough confidence in their goaltending. Christian Jari had a very bad year last year. Casey the Smith was remarkable. He was obviously brought back and rewarded for his good year. And Crosby, Malkin, Carlson, and Latang, their core four per se, they were good last year. They were solid. I don't think I have any concerns about them falling off or regressing at all as they get older. But again, the lack of scoring, Brian Russ is going to miss a couple of games to start the year. Jake Gensel obviously is gone. He was traded last year to the Hurricanes and then signed with Tampa in free agency. The Penguins are a team that I just don't think they have the depth at forward. And with their questions on defense and the questions in goaltending, I think there's too many questions for me to feel comfortable playing the Penguins in a playoff spot. But then again, it's Sidney Crosby. So maybe he just drags his team kicking and streaming to a playoff spot. And I want to complain to see Sidney Crosby in the playoffs once again. In third place, I have the Carolina Hurricanes. The Hurricanes, for me personally, felt like last year was the year for the Hurricanes. And they obviously fell short of that, losing to, I believe it was the New York Rangers. or or It was to the New York Rangers in the second round. Now, the big reason why I say that was the Carolina Hurricanes had a lot of cap space last year, but they also had a ton of free agents. They lost Brady Shea and Pesci. On the back end, they lost Tara Vinen, who was a solid top six player in unrestricted free agency. And they found some plug-and-play types of players who can 
who are cheap and potentially could adapt and play well into those roles, but it's yet to be seen. They're definitely a worse team than they were last year. I don't feel confident either in Frederick Anderson as a number one goaltender. I don't know if he can play 40 plus games. He's always dealing with injury. It's been a recurring thing since even his Anaheim and Toronto days. Maple Leafs fans know that quite well. And the big thing for me is, is Pyotr Kochekov going to take that starters net? And is he going to show why he was given that four-year contract just a year ago? Because he had a bad, bad year last year, but again, he's so young. And I wouldn't be shocked if he puts together a really solid season. And if he plays really well, I think the Hurricanes can certainly go on a deep playoff run. But personally, again, like like a lot of these teams that I've been talking about previously, I just think there's too many questions, and I have already seen that their defense and forward has taken forward group has taken a step back. So that's why I have the Hurricanes in third this year. In second place, I have the New Jersey Devils. I have the Devils in the Stanley Cup final last year. They were completely derailed by injuries. Jack Hughes started off the season so well, was on pace to win the Hart Trophy, but got injured, missed some time. Dougie Hamilton was a big injury that broke the Camels back. He was out for several months, and by the time he got back, there was just no – the Devils were so far out of it. It didn't really matter at that point. Goaltending was another big concern too, and the reason why I have the Devils in second place is I feel really good about Jacob Markstrom. Yes, he's 34 years old, but last year he had a great year for the Flames, a Flames team that was starting to enter a rebuild. And again, I think that's a big thing, along with good health for the Devils, that will set them up really well to go on a deep playoff run and for sure make the playoffs this year. And then in first place, I have the New York Rangers. I think the Rangers are arguably a top three, if not the best team in the NHL this year. And similar to what I said about the Hurricanes last year being their year, I think this year is the year for the Rangers, for them to potentially go on a deep run. This kind of like their last dance. And it's kind of crazy to say that, but Lafreniere, Kako, Ryan Lindgren, all their contracts are expiring. And then Igor Shosturkin's contract's expiring. And I'm not concerned about him walking in free agency. The Rangers are going to give him as much money as possible. But if they give him $12 million, that's essentially his current contract times around basically double what he's currently making. And with that, you're going to lose a top six forward. You're going to lose a top four defenseman. You're going to lose some pieces as a whole. So I really think that if there's there's a year for the Rangers to win the Stanley Cup, it's got to be this year. And once again, they have a solid decor. They have some young pieces in Braden Schneider and Keandre Miller to supplement that decor. And they also have solid players in their forward group, obviously. You have Panarin, you have Kreider, Lafreniere took a big step this past year. I wouldn't be shocked if he's a point-per-game player this year. He's had a slow development, but he's been taking good steps over the past couple of years to where I wouldn't be shocked if he's a point-per-game player. But yeah, I have the Rangers in first place in the Metro. And once again, as you can see, this is how I have the Metro shaking out. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below about my Eastern Conference predictions. Who do I have too high? Who do I have too low? What your guys' thoughts are? I'd love to hear them in the comments. Be sure to like this video as always. Subscribe to our channel as well. Check us out on TikTok, Ventral Martyrs for Sports. And that'll do it for this one. I would also encourage you guys to check out our interview with Christoph Oliwa. That's also featured on our podcast, Future Past it. Former NHLer Christoph Oliwa. And then also be sure to check out the Western Conference preview as well for my predictions on the West side. So let me know what you guys think. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See ya.